Hello, friends. Good to be back with you. This is Chris here on Teach Me Farm. So, you know, here on Teach Me Farm, we like to really nail those foundational topics like antibiotics, ACE inhibitors, etc. But, you know, we also want to address some things that maybe are hot topics or current that maybe are getting a lot of press to try to give the facts about them and how we actually handle them. So, you know, recently during COVID treatment, there's a drug called Paxlovid. And there's this term called Paxlovid mouth. And so I want to address this because it actually gives us the opportunity here at TMP to really discuss this as a general side effect of a lot of medications. So when you hear the term Paxlovid mouth, really what this is, is this is a form of a word called dyskusia or dyskousia. I've seen, heard it a couple of different ways. But all this is, is a abnormal taste disturbance from the drug. And it could be a number of different taste disturbances. It could be a bitterness, it could be metallic, it could be salty, it could be sour, or even in the worst circumstances, it could be a rancid type taste. And this is important to know and counsel patients on because it's very common a lot a, among a lot of medications. Metformin, for example, has a very metallic taste. Metronidazole, a very metallic taste. A lot of drugs have bitter tastes. In fact, Metformin has some data um, that shows that people are actually discontinuing therapy because it, certain generic formulations can also have a pretty bad odor to them. So it was causing non-adherence among patients. Um, so another, the one that's most important for our discussion today is ritonavir. So ritonavir is one of the components of Paxlovid. And we've known for a number of years that ritonavir, along with other protease inhibitors, has some of these drug-induced dyskousia type characteristics, especially the bitterness, and that's the one that's most prominent with these drugs. So Paxlovid mouth is really not a surprise for us that have been practicing pharmacy or practicing medicine, nursing, what have you, for a long time, because this is often a complaint of patients that take protease inhibitors. So ritonavir is a component of just about every protease inhibitor-based regimen within HIV. So when it's combined with nermatrovir, nermatrovir uh, other antiviral within Paxlovid, we start to see these bitterness concerns uh, yet again, not surprising. It's known by the manufacturer. It's a bitter type drug. Now, what I want to highlight though is this is different from COVID-19 disease-induced dyskousia or a term called anosmia, which means lack of smell. Probably early on in the pandemic, you heard about people losing their sense of smell or taste and from the disease itself, from getting COVID. And the problem with this one is it's much worse. These, when you can get these effects, it can last for months and months and months, most of them resolving within a year, but many of them taking a good six to nine months to resolve. So this is nothing like that with Paxlovid mouth. In fact, we know with Paxlovid mouth, um, most of these cases of dyskousia resolve upon therapy. In fact, all that I have seen have resolved upon discontinuing the Paxlovid or right after. Most of these are very mild cases and the regulatory studies were occurred in about five to six percent of patients. Only a select few decided, you know what, this, I just can't take this drug anymore. And they actually withdrew from the study. Most patients just went on and continued. And that's an important point for our concluding slide. So what's our final take here at Teach Me Farm? We pride ourselves on giving you efficient information um, that's going to help be applied to your practice. So the key point here is counseling is critical. This is a drug that why is it being administered to people with COVID? It's people who have mild to moderate COVID in the outpatient setting who were trying to prevent a hospitalization or death. So in these really high risk patients, if they don't know any different and it tastes different or tastes weird, they may stop the drug. And that non-adherence may lead to potential hospitalization and of course, in the worst case scenario, death. So how do we prevent this? There's a lot of stuff out there. Uh, room, you know, Chocolate milk, cinnamon gum, because it kind of overpowers the, the mucosa. And even peanut butter, you know, that sounds good to me, regardless of whether I have Paxlovid mouth or not. A lot of these sound pretty good, but in reality, they, they kind of overwhelm or coat the tongue or 
just have a, a, a unique kind of taste that uh, prevents some of this. Some success, some not. It is out there. I think it's reasonable to counsel your patients, especially if they have that concern. But the best medicine in this case is going to be reassurance. Reassuring your patient that if you take it for the five days as prescribed, right after you finish it, maybe a day or two after, this is going to be gone from your life, but you will have taken the therapy and potentially prevented an admission to the hospital for COVID-19. So with that, reassurance is the best medicine, and we hope you're understanding your medications better here, um, here on Teach Me Farm.